Hey, welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques. And today we're going to talk about how to evenly hem a wedding gown. And I'm also going to tell you the true story of how I got fired. Are you someone who has experience with a mix of sewing, but is looking to get into the bridal sewing niche? This channel is for you. Hit subscribe to become a part of the community. So we're going to start with suspending this gown from our rigging system. I do have a video about that. So this gown is suspended uh, from the ceiling, just like um, my entire future was <laughs> by this boss who is over me. Um, I'm going to basically, I'm going to hem this gown, um, but just to kind of keep it interesting, I'm also going to tell you the story about how I got fired while we're working on it. So uh, basically I pinned this hem uh, with the safety pins, I doubled the fabric over. I lined up the side seams and pinned them together. And I've got all the crinlin stuffed in the train area. So I've got it pinned through all the layers here. And I'm cutting it like a mirror. That way it's perfectly straight and even. No, it's not time to jump off this video because we have some other tips that you need to do besides just this to get an even hem, okay? And in this dress, um, in this video, I'm also reducing the footprint of this dress. So you'll just see I just passed the side seams and I'm actually kind of bringing in the sides of the train a little bit. Now, what I want you to take special note of is I don't just have the pins that are marking where I'm going to cut, and I am cutting at least an inch uh, longer than the pins because I want to have a nice hem allowance in there, but I also have other pins there along the edge of the original hem, some pins even above where I'm going to cut just to keep everything stabilized because I don't want part of the dress pulling in some different direction and stretching the fabric and causing it to not cut evenly. Now, the other important thing here is when I cut, I'm going to show you a detail here in a minute, a detail shot of it. But when I cut, I'm actually kind of making jagged little cuts um, with each um, cut motion that I do. I'm making sure that I don't nest the crux of the blades perfectly in the previous cut. I'm just kind of moving it over by maybe a millimeter or two, and then I'm making my cut. I'm going to show you what that looks like, and I'm going to show you why I do it. Okay. All right. So I'm going to clear all these pins out and I'm going to take it over the machine and get started. And I'm going to also tell you that story about how I got fired. So here I'm going to gain access to the edge of my hem by splitting open the vent there in the center back seam. And I'm also going to cut off the hang loop that is on the train. That is to keep the train off the floor in a retail environment, but right now it's just a trip hazard. So if this had a horsehair braid edge, we would sew it now on the lining, but it does not have that. I do have a video about how to hem with a horsehair braid edge. This one is just a lined bagged hem. So I want you to see the little notch that I formed in this hem edge. And basically, you've got two separate fabrics that behave two totally different ways. And one stretches a little more than the other. And it's easy if you hem for these to get misaligned and for you to end up with a bunch of extra of one other kind of fabric than the other when you're done. So see these notches? I'm going to use them, my jagged little cuts, to make sure that these layers are lining up perfectly so I can stretch one layer a little more and give a little uh, little relaxation to the other layer to make sure they line up perfectly. Um, this is important even if you have a walking foot just because of the way they don't stretch evenly because you know we're pulling on it and whatnot. So anyways, that story while I'm sewing, let me tell you that story. So I had a position, it was actually not a sewing position, it was a professional position. And my boss was 
pretty much a monster. Like I did a really good job. Um, all the people that I had to work for, um, besides my boss, they were really happy with my performance. Um, my coworkers were fine. Like everything was good, but he literally would call me into the office to correct me almost every day. If not, it was at least every week. And I remember it was, um, around Christmas time, I called a former boss of mine. Now notice how I'm also going to line up these smaller side seams here. Make sure they are aligned as I'm sewing. So I called up a former boss of mine um, who is in administration also still with where I was working and was talking to her and I was like, this new boss hates me. Like he really, really hates me. And I told her it had gotten to the point where I was literally having nightmares <laughs> that he was going to um, basically kill me. Um, I had a dream one time that I was driving down the road and he like came up behind me. He was in the back seat of the car and I saw him in the rear view mirror and he came up and he's like pulling the wheel to the side and trying to crash my car and kill me. So there was more to it than just like, you know, he was a grumpy boss. It was more to it than that. Um, so I'm telling her that, like, I'm really concerned. Like he really, really hates me. She's like, no, 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 no. You're being sensitive. You're a great worker. Everything's fine. Your former boss was super nice and positive. And this one is, you know, not that way. It's just his management st style, whatever. Well, anyways, um, I, uh, around, I guess it was about a month later, he called me into his office yet again, like no big shock. And I go in there and there's like somebody from upper management in the office with us. And I'm like, okay, this is different. And, um, basically let me take a, a break from the story here for a second. I'm basically kind of like pulling the fabric through, like I pushed it all back through that vent and pulled it through fresh at the spot that I'm sewing in, because sometimes that vent gets kind of overstuffed with the old hem that you've done. You'll know what I'm talking about when you go to sew it. But anyways, I'm still lining up these little jagged points. And also, um, not only am I telling you this story, but I'm also going to show you some pressing tricks here in the end. Anyways, back to my story. He calls me into the office and there's this upper management person in there and he says um i want to give you a choice and i'm like okay and he said um you can either put in your resignation this week or you're fired and <laughs> i was just i was just like wow okay <laughs> So I sat there for a minute and he was like, do you have anything to say? And I was like, well, thank you for giving me the opportunity to resign. And he said, okay. And then he said, do you have any questions? And I was like, um, yeah, why? <laughs> Like, why, why, why are you firing me? And, um, he said, I, oh, by the way, I'm sewing up the vent now. You can see I'm sewing it back closed. He said, I just have a gut feeling about you. And that was it. Like he never had anything else to say. So, yeah. So I got one more thing to say about that, but let me get this started here. Um, basically I'm going to try to get, this is where, um, my hemming started and I'm just going to generally start this here. It's not going to be perfect. See that little wobble in it. That's okay. And there's just like a lot of like weirdness going on in that hem allowance right there. Um, you can completely take it out and take out all the old hem right there and um, trim off any excess and whatever and super, super clean it. And that's fine. You can do that. Um, on this one, I just didn't, I just didn't go too deeply in clearing out the old. Um, so I like to sometimes correct a lot of this with the pressing. So I pressed it first and put the um, block on there to kind of set it. And then here I am coming back to it and I'm going to push that little wobble back in 
press it again, put the block on it again to really set that nice, sharp, crisp edge. And I'm going to do that as many times as I need to. I'm basically kind of training that hem there that I want it to lay very, very smooth. So I usually take a few passes of pressing to get that right. I have a lot of patience where that is concerned. So again, you can either correct that in sewing early on, spend a little extra time, or you can correct it in pressing. It's whichever you choose. But I'm just going to keep revisiting that as I um, press out the hem. And this is how you get that nice crisp edge, by the way. You're going to be pressing and using that block. And you're also going to be hitting that subscribe button right now. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to hit like and you're going to hit subscribe and then all your pressing is going to be amazing, right? So um, anyways, what I wanted to say with you guys is when he let me go, that was the beginning of something amazing in my life. And I never went back to that type of profession. And I went on to find my calling and my love in sewing. I had already been sewing for years at that point, but just not professionally. But you know what? He, yeah, he was a monster. Okay. He was, he was a really bad person. He was a bad boss. It was miserable. It was one of my least favorite jobs I've ever had. It's just a bad memory. But at the same time, he was right. You know, he had a gut feeling about me. And I have a gut feeling about me too. My gut feeling is I was born to be a seamstress and I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. So I just wanted to encourage you guys. I know a lot of you, you know, you know, our saying on this channel is, are you someone who has experience with a mix of sewing, but who is looking to get into the bridal sewing niche? This channel is for you. Okay, so my target seamster friends, BST besties, I just want you to know if you're working another job and it's not you, it's just not you, it's not hidden, and your dream is to become a seamstress, a professional bridal seamstress, you know what? I have a gut feeling about you. Just keep on. It's going to be great. You can do it. I know what you're looking for. You've been sewing for years, but you want to get into full-time bridal sewing. But there's something missing. You're missing the backroom secrets, the industry tips and tricks. The tools the sources, the techniques that give you the speed and the accuracy that the industry demands. You have found it. 